You ever had an issue with one of your servers at your data center and you rush all the way down to the colo just to find out that all it needed was to push an F1 button? That's a real pain in the ass, isn't it? If you don't have a setup like this with a standalone console, basically, or a KVM switch, you're going to be shifting through your bag or whatever gear you have at your colo, like in the rack, being able to connect to it so that you can access the host at the bare metal level. Because let's face it, servers are virtualized these days. Who actually runs anything on bare metal anymore? So I was super interested when I saw this little product. I think I saw a couple of other YouTubers with it and talking about it and using it, but I know I definitely saw it on Kickstarter or Indiegogo or one of those like crowdsourcing platforms. Come check this thing out. This is my current server. I used to have a whole lot of rack mount servers, but they weren't being used. So I ended up finding somebody that wanted to use them for some development. We did a little trade and now he's got a hell of a data center in his basement. But I saw this on eBay for like 60 bucks. I couldn't pass it up. It's PowerEdge R430. I love repurposing old hardware, by the way. But I picked this up so I can have a spare host for another project I was working on and thought, this is an excellent example to test out this new mini KVM toolkit by Openterface. This is all that it is. Realistically, this little KVM, you hook up some cables to it, go into your host, go into your remote machine, and you can control the bare metal like it's a console or a KVM terminal. Pretty sweet, comes with a little case. Back in the days when we used to actually visit the data center and didn't have a data center manager for things like that, that's exactly what we had to do. We had to either bring a monitor with us so we can just plug everything up when there's an error, just so we can go in and hit F1 to continue. You know, IDRAC wasn't communicating, ILO wasn't communicating, whatever. We couldn't remote into the machine to troubleshoot. We had to physically go on site and touch the things. This would have been great to have because I've got a MacBook Air the old, it's not old, actually, it's a couple years old. I think it's 2020. It works really, really well because it's so light, portable, and has enough horsepower to do most of the things that I want to do, including editing videos, if I really wanted to torture myself. It's capable of doing that. Anyway, I can show up at the data center, pull this out of my backpack, plug all the things in, and access it right from my workstation. Works with Windows, works with Mac. I think it even works with Linux. So here's what we're gonna do. Right now, we've got it up and running. It's just on the setup. I don't even think I have a hypervisor installed on this yet. You download the Open Interface app, the mini KVM app, and it gives you the instructions right there on the screen. Shows you what to plug in, where. So the output by default, or I'm sorry, the input, I guess it would be by default, is HDMI. My server and most servers that you know, old school physical servers that you're gonna find at a data center like this are gonna have a VGA on it. Typically, you're not gonna have HDMI, at least not on last generation or even current generations that I know of don't have HDMI outputs, but they do have VGAs. Got me a little adapter that's a VGA port with USB to power and HDMI conversion. So we simply plug that in and then I've got a small uh, USB-C to standard USB cable that I plug into the target side that goes into the server. Plug in our bright orange cable. Two hours later. A little bit of troubleshooting later. It looks like the cable has some kind of intermittent issue with it. Specifically, I plugged in a separate USB-C cable and it works. So check this out. You can see we've got a drop down here for all of our function keys like F1 through 12. We've got to control alt delete and stuff. So if we need to send those keys to the host, we can do that. Or I guess they would call it a target. So in their, in their terminology, this is the host and this is the target, which it gives an error saying the SD card is missing. And there we are. We can see that we can work and right in the menu itself, go in and go to iDRAC settings. I really do anything that you need to do within at the host level itself or target level itself, I guess you could say. Now I wanna try it on just a plain old workstation. So I've got a mini PC right here that I'm gonna plug into. It's headless, it has no monitors on it, but I do have an HDMI output and USB input. So let's see if it works on that any better than it worked on our 
antique PowerEdge server. We can see I've right here is our just a little mini PC. Let's get these out of the way. I've got just a uh, a plain old HDMI uh, output on it, and then a USB as well, USB A to USB C going directly to the mini KVM, and we'll just plug it in and see what happens. That was fast. That's what she said. Uh, literally, now I'm controlling a Windows PC from my MacBook Air using the mini KVM over one cable, just a USB C going directly into the MacBook Air. I feel like there's a lot of use cases for this. In home lab life, you've got Raspberry Pis, you've got mini PCs and micro form factor desktops and stuff running things all over the place or even centralized in like a server closet or a network rack. They don't necessarily all have monitors hooked up to them. Also check it out. Look, I've got that orange cable that wasn't working and now it's working just fine. Can't really see that very well, can you? We're, we're on our Windows 11 machine. So there must've been something funky trying to use this with the PowerEdge server because here it works just fine. So if this is something that you're interested in, link will be down in the description. I don't think it's an affiliate link. They just sent this over to me to check out and I did and I'm making a video for you to check out too. Like I said, this would have come in handy multiple times, field services where we've got to go on site and physically check an issue with the host, the physical server where nothing's coming up, we can't ping the box. I mean, a good server closet is gonna have a terminal setup going to the server or to multiple servers so that you don't need something like this, but guess what? That doesn't always happen. In fact, most of the time it doesn't happen, especially in, in SMB space. This definitely would have come in handy a time or two. So check them out, open interface, I think it's .com, let's see. All right, so at the time of recording, they do have stock, it looks like. The kit I received came with a case, which is fantastic. I have a small HDMI cable, a small USB-C cable, USB-C to USB-A with a USB-A to USB-C adapter on the end, the bright orange cable that comes with it, your, your instructions, your quick start guide. I even got some stickers, check that out. It all came in one little kit, which is very nice. If you're a field service engineer or out, um, out in the world working in tech, it's nice to have stuff like this to put it all into one place and you just slap it in your backpack. Links are down in the description below. If you're interested in picking one of these up, let them know the geek sent you and uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you think about micro KVMs like this that are this kind of form factor, super portable and available for lots of different applications.